introduce the world to you. Welcome, everybody, to The Wally Show. This brother, singer, songwriter. Yes. And it's <laughs> like ice cream and cake to my heart. You are a wrestling fan. Fan. Fan, fan. And I was fan. shocked that I've been following you for years. I've been like... Yeah. Known of you for a long time, and I was so shocked you were tweeting about WrestleMania 40. Yeah, I was supposed to, I was supposed to go, but plans changed last minute, and I was like, it'd be better because my birthday is what next week. So I was like, I'll just it was happy like, belay, happy early birthday. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> what so first of all, did you get your birthday wish? Because this was the the wrestling for people that are non wrestling fan. WrestleMania is the Super Bowl of wrestling. Right? No, it is. It literally is the Super Bowl, and the fact that there's two nights, <laughs> it's even more historic. I mean, it was like eight hours total, I think. Absolutely, because I actually went to WrestleMania uh, the year before last when the Undertaker retired. He was inducted yeah. into the Hall of Fame. That's the year I went. Oh and when it was God. in Dallas, and that was such iconic to see Stone Cold Steve Austin come out. Yeah, but this this era was under the Paul Levesque era, Triple H. Wow. And this is no Vince McMahon. This is none of the McMahon family other than Triple H. Is he's yeah. in charge? So this was something different. I think it felt different too. Yeah. How did it make you feel? What like what is your recap when you watch uh, WrestleMania? Um, 40 of 40 from night one, night two. What, like, what was your whole recap of both nights? I feel like it was so energetic that immediate, if you didn't know wrestling, if you randomly fumbled and just fell on the channel and seen it, you were so starstruck. I mean, you had people like Jade making her debut. Um, I really was happy for Gunther, even though he lost the championship. That was one of his best matches. Yes. I mean, it was just overall star-studded. I mean, even from the crowd. I mean, you looking at how many people are there, you're like, why are this many people there? Even if you don't know, <laughs> it still makes you intrigued. Like, why? What is this about? Um, and that's what made me as a kid be always a fan of wrestling. It was always intriguing. Um, the storylines. Absolutely. When I when I was watching and I said, oh, my gosh, to see Jay, to see Black. Let's first of all, yeah. let's the talk big three. about the big three. Yeah. Um, I am a huge fan of representation. So I was watching the press conference and Bianca said representation matters. I hope we get to the point where we don't have to say, oh, it's you made me. history. It could become, yeah. it's normal. But to see Jay, to see all of these iconic figures in WWE, it's and just- male dominated. Field. And a male dominated. And to see blackness just dominating. Yeah, uh, because I remember when Stone Cold Steve Austin did his podcast and somebody called in, why isn't there a lot of black wrestlers on WWE? And he said, Because a lot of black people are not into wrestling. Well, that was a lie. Yeah, a lot of yeah. black people are into wrestling, but they're not getting the opportunities like their white counterparts. This is still a white dominated sport, but you know, also, well, yeah, so it's like two for two. I, I get. I kind of get what he was saying there because the fan base what that I grew up around was black, right? Like I grew up around the black community of people that love wrestling, but on a general base, like on a just foundational base, I do feel like we have come a long way with our interest. The same way that we love football, I feel like now you can finally say that for the black, for our community. Cause I feel like a lot of people went to this Super Bowl. A lot of people on my timeline was talking about it. So I think because it's now becoming more mainstream, it has more eyes on it. So I'm not going to say black people all of a sudden are watching it, but I do think the numbers and value has increased to where every, every race, every religion is coming out to see them. Even they even have, um, what is the pay-per-view, uh, the Castle of the Castles or something like that, when they go to, yeah, I mean, they're just traveling the international now. Yeah. So that tells you a lot without even saying much. I mean, their pay-per-views are now in Puerto Rico. I mean, Backlash was in Puerto Rico, I believe, uh, or Costa Rica. It was one of the two. Yeah. Um, cool. And that, that was, I think, like, is so iconic because <clears throat> they just recently had one and we had to wake up like in the middle of the morning. Like it was early for us to catch it live yeah but this is iconic for me because when i was watching everybody want to talk about cody rose and finishing the story for me 
I cried because yes. I got emotionally involved in it. First of all, when The Rock came and it was going to be when when Cody gave it to him to face Roman, that was the plan. It was a long match. I it mean, was. It, it but was it was needed. It. It, 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 it was It was. It was really. It. It was worth it because I'm like, we need that. I was in the emotions and Roman really went there because yeah. he got lazy with the moves. Like we knew what he was going to do. He's going to do the, the punch and the spear. Okay. But this time he went there to, the, I mean, Cody got a reaction out of Roman like none other, but to see, the you know, the storyboard the was crazy. Yes. Cause I thought when the shield came out, I was like, oh my gosh. You know it's so crazy. So I didn't, um, I did not watch wrestling during that time frame. So when I was sitting watching, oh, you didn't watch. The show okay. came about, and I was like, what? I was like, if I smoke too much, I'm like, what is this? What does that mean? <laughs> I didn't understand what was going on. I okay. didn't recognize the music. So that's what I'm saying. I took maybe like four or five years from watching wrestling. So that part threw me completely. Oh, okay, crazy. but that that was iconic because we all thought that. He, you know, they, they was going to come back. The old members that left was, was right. When you do your research, you thought that Seth was turning against yeah. Cody. Yes. Yeah. That would have really been. Ooh, that that would have been, been something. But to see that in a piece of history and to see like the rock and to see, you know, the Uso brothers to see how they just evolved into mega stars. I mean, they had their own match. It was incredible. It was incredible. Like, yeah. It's just, and they're both attractive. Let's get into oh, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very attractive. Um, and Lois with uh, Naomi's with the bloodline. No, no, no. Yeah, the bloodline guy. Uh, uh, yeah. Jay. yeah. And it's just iconic. And so when I saw them come out and he speared them, like spear the brother. Off the stage. Off the stage. I was like, yes. It just drew me off. And then by the Ooh. time I was getting on that, then something else was going on. And then to see but the Attitude Era, the fans that go all the way back. Oh, my God. I think that I, this may be the smallest part, but it stood out significantly to me. When I seen Cody come up from the floor and I seen his wife, I, I was like, this reminds me when I grew up getting off the school bus, going home, waiting a couple of hours to watch, watch wrestling. It felt the glitter, the sequin jacket. I knew when I seen that outfit, I was like, oh, she's about, this is WrestleMania. This is really it. He's winning. Yeah. She had her sequin outfit on, the white, the boots. I was like, she looks like wrestling. It reminded me of Stephanie McMahon when she wore the jumpsuit that was very reminiscent, like the jacket, the embellishments. Yes. It was so epic. I when I and the mask he had on, it it was incredible. It, 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 the interest was everything, and to see how he uplift his black wife. Oh, and that's what I'm saying on that platform. It was like it was oh it's, I, it's iconic. It and, and 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 what really made <laughs> and she was oh, everywhere. She was, she was everywhere. everywhere. But before, like when we say when we seen that, but when Paul Heyman said, "Yeah, he's gonna cry to his wife." Brandy, you know the way how he put emphasis. They were like, oh, I, she, I, it. I did not think she would show up. It right, was, we no one knew that. I didn't know, so that's why I'm like, this is what Triple H's mindset is. He's bringing back. We don't know, like it's supposed to be a surprise because back in the day there was no social media. Anything you watch on Monday night, you had to tune like in tonight. You know? I'm gonna be glued because. Yeah. This is probably going to be the biggest Raw in years. In a long time. Absolutely. I mean, 140 some thousand people this weekend. That Absolutely. is. I Even mean, though Snoop Dogg fucked up the number. Oh my God. <laughs> he was high. So I'm going to give him he a was high. He was but, high. He was he getting old. Snoop yeah, Dogg. Yeah. But let's get into like when the match, in the, when you saw The Rock come out, the white. <laughs> it was it was so iconic. The bell bottom cut to those like it was yes, man. But what really got me when the Undertaker when it went dark and did you hear? I'm like, oh, so it was supposed to be Stone Cold, yeah. That, but he yeah. didn't sign last minute. No, no, no. But I personally think like it could. I think they need to hold Stone Cold for another moment. But having the Undertaker. With the rock, if with it, the rock, it. yeah, because we've been seeing the rock and stone cold follow, but to see the undertaker back and 
and, and the badass look too. Yes, I mean, that that look was so classic. That, that was that, after that, his legendary look. Yeah, he, yeah, and, and let's also get it to John Zena. Even though John Zena was struggling to run down that ramp, you know. Yeah. <laughs> But it was just Why was he, run, he was run, I thought he was about to fall. Yeah, that's because he needs to be stretching. See, when you leave wrestling, you still got to keep up with that training. It was very strange. I was, was looking, and I was like, this man about to fall. Down the <laughs> and it's not going to be good. And I'm the type of person where I would be laughing for 20 minutes. So the match would be midway, and I'm still, yeah, I'm still laughing. thinking about yeah. him falling all the way down the entrance. Because when Undertaker came, he choke slammed the rock. I was like, yeah, oh, man. and then it just went back. To and the our rock head. is heavy. I mean, he's muscle, like you yeah. know, he's pretty solid. So yeah. that was pretty impressive. They're very pretty, right, right. I, I'm just, and when I saw uh, Cody when he did that move about his finisher, I think he did it three times. Three times, three. That's you what I knew. I noticed. So uh, WrestleMania, they kept repeating the finish moves with Rhea mm -hmm. Ripley, their match. With yeah. it was like every match felt like the finishers were not good enough. I don't know. That was very consistent all throughout. That was yeah. my only I, 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 I think that because they are controlled with TKO and they control UFC, they wanted more real like brutality kind of thing. It yes, like they that. wanted more brutal. So you can tell, like, but it's good for us because that's what we do on the video games. Yeah, we we yeah. So we it's, do it's, the wrestling moves twice. <laughs> yeah. So when I when I was watching and when you were tweeting, I don't know if I tweeted you about Vince McMahon. I you did. Was, and I was oh, like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. It was you because I, I tweeted you about Vince McMahon. I don't know what I said about Vince, but all I do, I was like, delete it, delete you you out of my mentions. You like delete, get him out of my mentions. Yeah. I don't deal with him. But let's Fresh. Get, but I get it. I get it. I, what point you but mean. for me, the reason why I can separate the man from the, the art from the him, art, yeah. Yeah, for what he did. Because without Vince, there wouldn't be a WrestleMania. There would be a Triple H, a Stephanie McMahon. And that, that was would, interesting that she came out. Yes. Very interesting. Because that's still her. I think people get it twisted. If you really think Vince McMahon don't have nothing to do with WWE, you stupid. The man built. I think he's in the Rock ear for sure. Of course, he's definitely in the he's Rock. He's a powerful entity. That's how it was overbooked. It yeah. was giving me Triple H with Vince McMahon sprinkles on it. Of it course, you know they're the calling. Yeah. You know they call him Vince McMahon. Yeah. There's no in the world a man that create took this company from his father into a global. Phenomena. He have no influence. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. He's behind it and he making a lot of money, but I'm glad to see Stephanie because when you see her, you see Vince. Yeah. Like, okay. She needed to be there. Because and there's hope still, you know, not yeah. with the man, but there's hope in the, in wrestling. I feel like a lot of fans that grew up with wrestling, right? Like me and you, we grew up watching it. Mm -hmm. Even though Vince did what he did, and even though it was awful, and I mean, it's still going on, there's still everything is alleged, alleged, alleged. But I do feel like, despite that, you, if you're a true wrestling fan, seeing, seeing Stephanie McMahon was it was just a circle of the moment for everything. It was like she was a star, she opened the second night, and I knew then she's setting the tone and the energy for what's to come. Um, she's legendary. I mean, Stephanie McMahon, I wish she would have came out with her old thing. Um, yes, the, yeah. the girl, the, yes, I just, was the, I, how did it go? Uh, I, 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 it, it was like she was talking and singing. Yeah. And singing. Damn, I can't think yeah, of it. It's, um, but it's a singer, it's a woman in the vocals. When she I'm home. all grown up, yeah, it, it should have been that. And I, I think honestly, it should have been. But I was glad to see her because she was burnt out from the corporate America. People have to understand WWE. Oh, yeah, see, she left completely. We see, the, we see the entertainment factor, but it's a corporation and it's egos involved. And it's and a money, lot. It's, most importantly, it's a lot know. of money. So so yeah. she was kind of and she's a mother, too. But to see this WrestleMania and to see the Undertaker, the rock and to see, but my favorite moment, I don't know if you agree with this, when R-Truth won the, the tag team titles i was like yes this man is so underrated yeah from his comedic timing his oh. story time. he kept the 24 7 title relevant 
Yeah. He kept it relevant. He kept it fun. Anybody that our truth have worked with, he brings out the best in them. He's also just a positive light. Um, yes. If you're watching wrestling and you feel like it gets a little dull, a little boring, I feel like when he pops in, there's this level of radiance that just pops in. And you like, he's captivating. you like, oh, my God, what is he going to say? What is he going to do? So yes. when he did that at WrestleMania with the splitting of the tag, I was like, while it was calculated, it was storyboard, storytelling, splitting the titles. I feel like it was just perfect for his character being yes. just clueless, like him going to and like, oh shit, wait, oh, where's the? It was, it was classic. It was. Yeah, classic. I, I, I mean, he's great on the mic. Uh, I, I love he, he did his old interest that was up. I love that. And they um, needed to split the titles. The, they needed to split. Yeah. The, I'm glad because we need the raw brand. I'm, I'm glad they need to separate. I'm glad. That when Cody have the it's the WWE championship. I'm glad and we need the inter intercontinental uh for the women. Some yeah, a mid card. Yeah. Uh, we need a mid card for the women. Absolutely, too many women because Great. the women division at one point they were beating the men. Like they, the men would do like they're there's but the women were very entertaining and they're still entertaining. Now they got Jade. Now it's so much competition with women now. And they are so athletic. I think that's very athletic, more difference. athletic than the man. If somebody they are, I mean, Jay Wayne. came out looking like a storm, an action figure. <laughs> on the, I mean, I seen the the paint going down her whole body. I was like, yeah, yes. she, she's about to power bomb somebody through. There. Yes, like, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Um, for Raw tonight, I'll be watching it live. What do you um, think is going to happen? What do you think is going to be the highlight that walk away? Like you're like, whoa. I think the highlight, of course, is going to be Cody speaking. But I think also for people that are coming up, I think we need to keep an eye on Paul Heyman. Who's going to who is he's going to work with next? CM Punk, because CM Punk. Um, Did he change characters? Who? CM Punk? No, not uh, I'm Paul Heyman. Rollins. Uh, so do you think that's an official change back or do you think that was just for rest? That was something else that's playing in the back of my head. Is he going back to like the shield energy, like that whole character? Because I don't think so. No, I just think that was just an homage to that. I don't know, I, or it's it could strange. be, or it could be going it's, back to that. But my thing, I, I personally want to know who is Paul Heyman, who is going to manage. Um, Roman Reigns, I'm hearing that he's going Hollywood. Um, Hollywood is knocking on his door. He don't want to wrestle full time because you know cancer and all of that. He want to make that Dwayne Rock money, and you know. And it's he looks physical. really good to be, man, for him to have went through what he's going through. He looks I mean, amazing. He works I mean, out a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. And he carried WWE for a long time. He's tired. Yeah, he, he was tired. He's tired. He carried it, the company for a long time. The company, because once John Cena left, it was a void. That's and what I'm saying. There was a void. I believe void. I stopped watching after, I hate to say this, but I love, I love to say it at the same time. <laughs> I stopped watching when Trish retired. With Trish Stratus, she retired with I think in her last match was with Lita. That was the last time a for moment for me. I was like, I dabbled in and out. Um, but wrestling kind of took a hit during that time frame. It, it took a major hit, and I think it was multiple factors. Number one, the major one was Vince McMahon not willing to change with the times. Yeah, he abandoned the women. He had the title. I mean, I wasn't a fan had, of that either. Yeah, he embedded all the titles because back in the day in the Connell title was you know if you really did good with that the next step is the wwe championship yeah um the women division was great it could have been greater back then but you had a lot of men had yeah. them doing a the bikini match uh it, it, you know and mud rolling around in mud they wasn't really fun and they had some talented people they had jazz they had leader they had trish stratus they had oh, she was a favorite man jazz so, was uh oh. They had some iconic figures, but during that time, the male didn't care. They at that time they didn't care, but the writers didn't care about women. Um, but now the women are there, and I think Triple H and I love Triple H because now he's thinking long term. It's not like a quickie; like he's giving us okay. He's planning months in advance. I mean, I think I honestly think also with the way that the storyline was supposed to be with The Rock versus Roman. I thought it was quite interesting how the fans took over on social media and kind of like influence. No, we need to go back to what it was, what it was going to be, but add a little spice to it. I think that was really cool and telling that 
they wanted to do something different, but once they realized they were getting a lot of pushback, they had to have Cody win, and it would have been a huge, huge disappointment if he absolutely. Yeah. But this is the iconic point for The Rock because oh, yeah. the creative as a part said, of it. when he called them and said, "Hey, how about I turn heel?" That we wasn't expecting The Rock to turn heel. He was usually coming as a baby face every blue moon. We all cheer. I don't think he's done either. I don't know. He's not done. No, because I think he's gonna do something else. Of course, it, it's he's and, and then people gotta understand the reason why we're gonna see more of the rock because he's on the board is in his financial interest that WWE succeed. Uh, right. and he gets yeah. more influence, he gets more power in the company if if it succeeds. So, of course, we're gonna see more of him. I'm interested to see more of him because let's be clear. This ride to WrestleMania 40 would have been a snooze fest. Without the rock, let's keep well, it. I see, without I, I, part, the I rock is a big piece in this. I, I agree, I agree. Um, and then with CM Punk, what happened with the Vince McMahon with Brock Lesnar? I mean, it was it like was I a said, lot, it took but, a lot of hits a yeah. month before, yes. But the that was a lot. we kind of forgot about it when the rock went and said, You're gonna be crying to your mama. And then the way he brought his mama, then he made him bleed. The then he cry baby. Him, he called him a boy. Then he whooped him. I was like, he was cussing. Then I, was I ain't like, going to lie. I was thinking to myself, I was like, I don't know if I would have liked this scene if it was so black. I right. Of it. course you wouldn't have liked it. It was so brutal. I felt bad for Cody. Like It was to a point where I was like, if he do not win, I already oh. cried last night. I cried like boohoo, like, oh yeah. my God, I cried my eyes out. Just seeing him, <laughs> he was really feeling it. And I was like, you know, never give up. And, and it's just a testament to his character. Yes. It was so brutal. It was two Royal Rumble wins, which is his story. Um, and it just would have broke a lot of fans, including me, if he wouldn't have won. Um, not just because of a title. It was because we go through our own life experiences. And it's like, to get to fight so hard and be so consistent and put so much time and effort in to be told no and you're not it's not gonna happen it, it's it's heartbreaking yeah. so I think to tell this story on such a huge platform it it gives you inspiration it gives inspiration when the reason why I love Cody's story because of his father oh it, the father because he never got the title he he never got his just due that when you get to know about the history the gold dust and the whole the whole family like it's it's a story yes it's a very historical piece and was my get, favorite gold to dust. make him a, okay to make absolutely gold dust was iconic Legendary. this everything everything the, sound, the, music, the hair the makeup the gold, the the gold dust literally let's, let's get into the interest was iconic too but to see cody to be the face of the company it's great. Number one, he's he's young. He oh, how old he is, and he's from he's, Atlanta. I love that. By he's the way. in his thirties, like his okay, like his thirties. Uh, and he's good in front of the camera. He's exactly. everything. Now, this is the thing in the close. I know you got to go. AEW is suffering right now, and now everybody from my sources, they're they're they want to come to WWE. WWE is red hot. But WWE is not for everybody. It's not. But AEW is the tra – I'm sorry to say this. They are the training camp for future WWE stars. You think so? Absolutely. Because – They don't have great – I've watched AEW. Look, look at Jade. She from AEW. No, no, no. The talent there is great. Okay, but yeah. I feel like they are not training their people because there are a lot of injuries. I, well, of course, but that's because of the that's because of the owner is stupid. Yeah, he's trying to be their friends. He's such a fan. They are not training good he, enough. He's, he's not trained. He don't understand the formula of wrestling. He just know it from a fan. For, but baby, do you understand the business? Do, where's the trainers? Do they can do it safely? And he just don't know. He got the money, but you need people that understand the storytelling, the business, how to train. And that's something that WWE got down to a science. I also want to say this, too. I know I, like, literally got, like, six minutes. But um, what I, I, I've seen a lot of people say or criticize Jade performance. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's so terrible to, to even, like, pick at her like that. And I say that because 
her ability, her physique, for one, is incredible. Absolutely. Her wrestling ability is not a 10. It's not a China. It's not a next level wrestler. No. But no. I can you go back to artists like uh Trish. Trish literally would come down to the ring in pumps and glitter coats and slap, and everybody would go crazy. She mm. was not how she was when she ended. No. You know, like Trish isn't the best wrestler, but the point I'm making is Trish was a ballet. Yeah. And she came to be a seven-time women's champion, and she's amazing in the ring. So it, it's comments like when people say, oh, she only did a power bomb, she only did a kick. You guys have to keep in mind, they're training probably two to three times a week. They're getting storyboards thrown at them every fucking hour, I would assume. Excuse me, excuse mm -hmm. my language. So it's a lot of changes with that. Her coming from AEW is very open-minded. With WWE, it's open-minded, but it's very scripted. It's very like, no, you're going to do this. You're going to do this. It's very detailed. And I think it's a lot of pressure for you to think a person has been on TV twice on a pay-per-view, I think, that she's going to have a 30-minute match. I mean, it's so stupid. And, I, I, but, but, and then it's also, too, most of those white fans put up because they don't want to... I mean, yeah, give her a chance. I mean, right. give and, her a and chance. Black women, black people, period, especially in wrestling, because we talk about wrestling, they don't give them a chance to develop. No. White people come here. Cody, when he started, he was trash. He was just... Maxine Dupree. Right. I think he should be off TV immediately. <laughs> Even, even, even me and you could wrestle better than Max. Me could get in the ring, ring the bell, <laughs> and we people would be like, Oh my god, like they would be, Oh my god, and us wrestling versus Maxine. I mean, right. it's so bad. It, but but this, this, you got to give her time to develop. And my mentor, Don, said, He said, Wiley, every wrestler, when we throw trash, give them time to develop. Remember, remember Roman Reigns, he used to get boo, boo. We don't want him. They tried to force him at first to be this megastar. We, we are the fans refuse. We booed the rock when he tried to introduce Roman. Now Roman became that guy. Uh, when Cody started, he had makeup on his face. You know, they turned that's why I think they need a middle card because you they, have these very strong, muscular, yeah, very, very over the top females, and then you have the pretty girls that can do a little one, two, or two. Yeah. But they're they're nowhere to be. I mean, she fought Nia right. Ripley, and it was the weirdest match. But th but this is the thing where I think Jay should have just debuted on NXT because the reason why I like Bianca because she was able to train in NXT. Now Shawn Michaels is in charge. She would have been great. I think Jay would have been better if they would have allowed her in NXT for six months. And I, I think, think my biggest crazy. critique, if I had to yeah. critique Jay, if I had to say anything <laughs> bad about her. I always say she got to pick up the speed. Yeah. I do feel like she moves like a robot in the ring. It's like, girl, is your yeah. neck broke? Is your leg yeah. hurting? She yeah. moves around pretty and like. Does, they, they, they need to put her in the ring more. You yeah. got to, in order for her to loosen up to really, she they got to put her on Raw, SmackDown. And no more, and no more looking good. And like Monday night, I don't want to see her get on here tonight and be like, "Yeah, we did." I, no, I no, need, I need to have a see fight. her. And of course, what's <laughs> going to happen, of course, what's going to happen? She's going to battle Bianca. Like that's going to happen. That's going to be a money. And I hope not at WrestleMania because I do want them two to have their iconic, iconic moment. But I don't want it to be where Jade lose and keep Bian Bianca's reign and Jade starts a loss for WrestleMania. I, 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 I don't know. I, 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 I see. I see them in the future going at it, just like Bianca husband. I see him turn against his tag team partner because he I should. see. I hate his I wardrobe. See, What's his, I see, his name? Oh my gosh, I can't think of his wardrobe name. is terrible. He had a tank top and some shorts yeah, and the yeah, yeah. And I love her husband, but I just think her husband. He's going. He he got single star. Main, I see it in him. Yeah, um, he's amazing in the ring. Let's. I mean, amazing. The the hot the the off the ropes. The way how he did that when he, he flipped did. outside. Yes, um, he almost so his, he's proud. Literally, his friend, his <laughs> partner is is done. I can I can see it. I, I watched the reality show. The partner is a is dead weight on him. Like he doesn't look, but also, and I hate to be that look person, but I'm just like, he look. doesn't look like he belongs with the, the, the wardrobe is totally it's, different. It's, it's, it's for us. And then it's, it's, it's just, again, WWE still struggle with black wrestlers. They always got to get them a cup. They got to be a thug. They got to, you know, they don't know how, and this is the thing I got to talk about WWE and this, this is my activist hat. They need more black writers. 
They have they have none. I don't they, even think I've seen I don't think they have none. In order, and it's plenty right here, hire us to know how to write stories for their black talent because we know how to get great characters to speak to that demographic. I think those white writers, they only think about ghetto, ratchet, gangster. We are so much more than that. And you have to be special. And I think Paul Heyman should work with him. I'm telling you, if they Rip match move. with uh, Bianca Husband. I oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul okay. Heyman should work with him. Yeah, I think if Paul Heyman work with him is because something about Paul Heyman, he can bring out whether you black. Look what he did for Taz. He turned that man into a, a, a machine. Um, and then he came to WWE and became a comic. He became a joke. Uh, but he was, but so I love Paul Heyman because he's still a creator of talent. A little history about Paul. He almost had a deal with TNA, but yep. TNA wanted to keep the legends. They didn't want, yep. they, he said, I got to let the legends go. We got to invest in younger talent. They got more years ahead of them instead of behind them. But man, Joe Work, thank you. We got to do this again. I got to, I got to do it. Back to back day for me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I got to get you back because we definitely, I got to get you on to talk about Raw. Because this, this era, Especially if you have to name this era of wrestling, your closed remarks for WWE, what do you call this era? This new era? Yeah. Mm. I would say the first thing that comes to mind. Ooh, give me 20 seconds. Um, because I want a good one. Uh I feel like when I think when I watched it last this weekend all together, I thought of like brand. I think they are really going towards brand, the prime, the drinks, the the ch I see damn chicken wings flying around. I was like, yeah. it, it's really it, wrestling has transitioned to the mainstream to the point where it's like a huge brand. So I see by December. It's going to be even more like the end of the year going into the new year. It's going to WrestleMania 41. Is gonna be even more epic. So yeah. I think if I had one word to summarize what I think the new era is gonna, it's gonna be brand. I mean Netflix, um, money. I it's think more it's gonna, money, brand. It's green. I pay attention to stuff like that. It was green. It's like the coloring of last night. It was triple H, triple H DX all day. I just all I kept thinking about in my head. Yeah, I, I see. I think this is the the fuck you era. Like it's 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 gonna be that. This is Netflix. This is going to be. This is the Paul of that era. Uh, we never ever seen it. Pretty. That's why I said brand. I feel like they're about to go into a certain pocket that yeah. we yeah. love. Yeah, but on a whole nother level. On a whole nother level. And this is our first time next year that WWE Raw will be on Netflix, and that the sky's the limit. Because brand. It's 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 crazy. And I that's when the cable is going to die. Once they move over and that success, every basketball, football, they all going to abandon cable and they're going to get them billion dollar contracts for like Netflix or all the streaming. That's it. Once once they got raw for about five billion and a Super Bowl, as you know it, we will be able to watch Super Bowl on Netflix. Thank well, you. We have literally less than an hour and 25 minutes. Like it's. Not too far from tonight. I am excited. Um, I, I'm going to be tweeting. I know you're going to be tweeting. Yeah. And I know not to tag Vince McMahon. No. <laughs> and and, and it, I, I feel like, because for, for me, I said I got to talk about wrestling more because it's not too many black commentators yeah. that talk about wrestling. Like I told you, this is a very white male dominated sport. Even in a commentator media space, is not too many black. JD people. is great. Shout out to JD. I do like JD. Yeah, I love JD. Yeah. I love so many, especially Wrestle uh, WrestleMania uh, from the UK. That YouTube channel, uh, just iconic. I mean, the UK people is just they got wrestling down to a science of commentary. It's gonna be epic. I but am definitely be. looking forward to tonight. I feel like tonight, forward, yeah. you got it. Oh, and one more thing. Damn, I, it was one more thing. <laughs> one more thing I want to say. Um, the real match with uh Becky, I liked it, I enjoyed it, but this is my honest opinion about Becky. She's an amazing uh wrestler, I love her character, but it's time for her to sit down. 
<laughs> I understand that she was sick. I understand that she had a fever, and I definitely understand that she it was a lot going on at one time for her. But I'm not interested anymore in her. After the Trish cage match, I thought she should have closed the door then, but she kept it going. And it's it's getting to a point where I'm tired of seeing her. Um, <laughs> how many times she cut her hair? I'm tired of it. It's over. It's, it's it, time. It was pointless. Someone else should have been in that spot. And I'm not saying it should have been Jade or someone that's new, but I think we could have figured out some other WrestleMania card. That was a very... It, it wasn't memorable. I think, I think she knows she's on her way out anyway. I think yeah. I, I, don't, I think she's 37 now, and um, her part. she was sick. You can tell that she wasn't into it. Um, and I really feel for her because at one point she was dominating. And see, that's what I'm saying. If you don't know how to change the time and keep yourself fresh. We've you lost know. her spark, and I think yeah, that's the did. main thing. The, the cage match with Trish was great. But I think when you look at her history, it's just after that, it's it's very like weird. But they promoted her book though. <laughs> you know, I love the book. I love the book. Um, I'm just saying, like her as a wrestler. That's I think right. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's it's dry. Even even when Col uh, Kofi Kingston, we all wanted him to be the champ. I wanted him to be the, be the champ. When he got the champion, damn, he his run was just stupid. It was it was forgettable. He didn't have no aha moment. He didn't reinvent himself. He. He got lazy when he got the title. You should have really. That's one thing I love. If anything with black wrestlers, Booker T is one that knew how to change characters. Anything you gave him on the five time WCW chapter to King Booker, anything he knew how to reinvent himself as a character. Because you still got to be entertaining. This is sports entertainment. This is not just doing a suplex, doing a leg drop, doing an ankle lock. No, you still got to. Talk on the mic. You still got to entertain. Paul Heyman is not a wrestler, but his Hall of Fame speech went viral. He, he told the people in the crowd, you think ECW is dead and you think it died doing bankruptcy. You can suck. You know the rest. He said that. Yeah. Like, because you can't, but you can't go to school for that. That's just like a God given gift where you can use your voice to captivate the entire audience. Thank you, Joe Work. How can the people get to follow you for those that want to see your tweets and get into your yes? Business? Follow me on Twitter. Um, it is Mr. Joe Work, and also on IG is Mr. Joe Work. I am dropping new music. It is gonna be so good. Everything that everything that's great, it takes time. I'm not one of those people that put out something every week, every day, every it, it, it is pointless. Yes, it's all quality work, and people will appreciate it. So I am so thankful and grateful for. You invite me tonight. Um, we gotta do this more. We gotta. I, like, I, I said, yeah, I, I'm because I was always looking for like wrestling fans to get on here to talk. And when I got on Twitter and I saw you, you got me together. <laughs> I, I love it because I hear your points. I was like, okay. And no, I, I was joking with y'all. Right, I, but I love to see black people that's into wrestling. I love that, like, because it's not it's it's plenty of us, but I want to see more of us represented on YouTube diving into this. The yeah. culture, especially for the big three, because I'm here for that. I, I want to see what they're gonna do, because obviously, them white them white wrestlers are afraid because they got the black community. And one thing about black people, we get behind you. The sky is the limit for the big three. So I, I literally can't wait till tonight. I think tonight is gonna be <laughs> it's gonna set the tone for what we will expect or what we can expect for I would say SummerSlam is gonna be SummerSlam is the the I call it the mini WrestleMania is like the yeah, it's the midway, the mid yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm here for everybody's excited for Raw tonight. They want to know will Stone Call make an, uh, an appearance because we all thought he's gonna make an appearance at Who knows? that would shock us. But what they I can know, Philly, don't y'all be dead because y'all will be on the inside. Y'all won't be freezing because y'all, if I was out there, I'd have been hoarse because I'd have been, I'd have lost my voice. They would have had, they, I would have had to have an Uber X L L L come all the way into the arena and get me. I would have been so <laughs> out of my mind done. But anyway, thank you so much. Thank we got to do this again. Yes, thank you so much. All right, see you later. Thank you. All right, bye. Don't work, y'all. Make sure y'all go follow him on Twitter. Um, wow, iconic. So let's get into the rest of our commentary, you guys. So um, first of all, uh, I want to get into uh, really quickly 
uh, Jamal Green have put out a tweet, and I'm going to get into my celebrity gossip after this, but apparently a police officer, pow, pow, a unarmed black man in Chicago and one of the white police officer unload more into like he reloaded into this unarmed black man. And according to J. Maul Green, he have heard that the police were telling them to uh, prepare to wear your riot gear once the videotape come out of this, uh, the Wiley show. We have reached out to the Chicago po Police Department to get an update. I've reached out to some people at NAACP. Uh, they're notified of, of, of this, but as of right now, nothing have came out yet. And, and then J-Mo Green kind of like had to pull back his words because the city was saying that you're trying to egg on a riot. And he said, no, I'm not trying to do that. But I will keep you all updated on that. Um, but I've been talking to some activists. They're saying something happened and it's, it was caught on the tape. So uh, once that is released, we do have to talk about it. So uh, I did tell the people in the city, some people, some officials in the city, uh, to especially the mayor's office, that uh, we're still dealing with a crisis uh, with police. And I talked to attorney, um, uh, Mr. Uh, attorney um, that came on our show, Mr. Um, Carton, and it's some changes with the police. So, so now you, the police have to go in front of the police board and the arbitrator and the arbitrator is not equipped to talk about policing. So they get to pick the arbitrator to, to go against instead of the police board, but it's some different changes. So I'm going to bring an expert that can talk about that. Uh, but I am asking you all to pray for the city, um, pray for the city because the city cannot afford to have a riot. No city can afford to have a riot because once a riot happened or if anything of that nature happened, um, it affects the black community. Uh, many cities, including Chicago, are still suffering from the riots that happened back in the 60s. They never recovered. Um, so we don't need that. Uh, what we need is um, investment. What we need is good police officers. Uh, and what we need is, like I said, more investments and in, in great politicians, not just Black politicians, which because which it does matter to have people that look like you in office, but to have people that look like you in office that's doing for people that they that they have the same skin tone. You supposed to make sure you fight like hell for that. So I just want to keep y'all updated about that. Now I'm going to get into uh, Young Miami, and I want to get into JT. Um, but first, we get into that. Uh, y'all know this spirit of women are the black ones they're not focusing on talent they're focusing on beefing on each other beefing with each other glorilla jt and all of that now they were beefing now today out of the ordinary just out of the blue you see young miami and jt just going at it and i'm gonna read a couple of tweets here um y'all do know that there's city girls and i'm getting an update from love maria um, shout out to her, and um, they were they were sending me DMs. La Maria and others were just bombarding me with DMs about what Carisha was saying about JT and what JT was said about Carisha. So I'm greatly disturbed to see this because these are two rappers that never really reach um, arena selling out. Tours. Um, they never really sold more than 20 million records. They never had, they never became these mega um hip hop stars, rap stars, nothing at all. Um, so but for to see them beef is just stupid, in my humble opinion. But uh JT checks Santana, even Santana is involved in this. And JT checks Santana after he said everything will be addressed on the show. Uh, at the fans wonder why young Mary doesn't defend her online. I better not be mentioned. LOL. Um, and then young Miami said, uh, the clueless role is getting tired. Uh, and then said, and then young Miami said about what exactly put it on the floor was T. Uh, but then somebody else said, you know, you're a weirdo. You came on here putting LOL in the middle of JT arguing, um, like girl, you see it. 
Uh, so then it went from there, from her young Miami going against a fan or arguing with a fan. And then it was uh, the girls are fighting JT and young Miami exchange words. Miss mama, this is your last day playing dumb. And that is what JT tweeted to young Miami. And then young Miami said, a B been sneak dissing me for weeks and I ain't say S word, what a B man at me for. And then JT responded, Glock loaded with extended clip. Uh, then JT also said, what happens in the dark always comes to the light. Young Miami responded, I ain't jealous of, of a soul. I'm always like, go B word, go. I clap for everybody. I show love to everybody. It it ain't a B word. I haven't shown love to. JT responded, I'll be too much. Uh, it would be too much for me to tweet. I would like a sit down, Carisha, please. And this time, leave Santana home. Then JT also said, I know I come out crazy, but never in my life did no whack S word to this girl. She literally enjoys seeing me being dragged. When people show me love, she goes crazy, call it a hate train. But like I said, we can sit and talk about it. Um, and then Young Mammy said, no bars and sideways. Uh, are about her. JT said, they're not. You made two whole songs dissing me. JT responded, and I was for sure there for her from the beginning, but y'all will see this is in time that I'm not, never was, never will be the problem. Have a nice day. And then um, Young Miami said, LOL, here, here we go. Okay. Uh, Young Miami tweeted, for you to come on here and try to play victim is crazy. Um uh Javon J uh Javia. Um you've been sneak dissing me for the last couple of days. I haven't said S word back to you. You made two old songs dissing me and still rap your S word with my chest show love. So what's the real problem here? Um then young mammy said you let the internet put in your head that I'm jealous of you when you know I'm the one that always pushed us. You have uh re re reminisce toward uh um, meant towards me, resentment to I'm sorry, and that's okay. A B trying to kick me while I'm down, play into these narratives is dangerous when I've been nothing but a friend to you. And JC said, Wish Sean was about you. Young Mammy said, No bars and sideways. JT said, Oh, girl, the internet told you that Wish Sean was about you, the one saying it's city girls, S word, even when it ain't city girl, uh, S word. That was released under City Girls or the one that was saying Roddy Solo, but I'm still in a group. Get your phone back from whoever this is, baby. Don't play with me. Oh, wow. And then JT said, oh, wow, you're really losing it. If you thought that's why, that this why not speak to me about it, you came on here and said, LOL, so people can ask you why you wasn't defending me. Attention seeking as usual. Okay. That was that. And then... um and then uh, Santana uh, has a response for JT. Uh, he, uh, 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 Santana said, uh, I thought he was talking about, I thought he was talking about Puff and those allegations, just like the rest of the world. WTF, are you talking about? Reread what I said in case you didn't comprehend the first time. And then so Santana said, JT, you retweeted a Nicki Minaj stand asking why we didn't speak on Miss pissy allegations which refer to diddy not you everybody look for answer response to that situation which would be televised you unblock you unblock me, me to insert yourself i'm still confused i'm not the problem i'm the problem i'm the villain that's what such santana said i'm the problem i'm the villain then such santana said jt um jt uh please You always throw me in some S word. You unfollow me and block me like I'm the person you got a problem with. Please address your issues head on with any and everybody you don't like. Stop taking it out on me. I don't need to be mentioned. Then so Santana said, FYI, I was initially asked to be the co-host of Carisha, please. I declined. It was a guest host to people I was genuinely friends with, i.e. Lotto, JT, and Suki. Got scrapped. I don't need to be involved. I got my own motion. JT said, Miami is looking for a way out of her situation. You are sad effing case. Um, 
you uh they said you have the case you're looking for a way out of your situation who was the first person called you when it all started you are sad effing case um um then then she said uh not you and then young mammy said you weird but always want to act like i'm a weirdo you always mad it's always a problem all i try to do is push you tell uh tell you you the S word, you can rap, you should model, et cetera. You always mad. You're doing your S word as you should. Congratulations. But somehow you still mad at. And then I think that was, oh, it was more. And then JT said, if she ever mad, then there's a reason behind closed doors. Young Mammy said they spoke on the phone. If I'm ever mad, I have a reason to be behind closed doors. You have done stuff to me that you think I should just get over. You never come to my defense when I would have literally took a the B word for you. When C uh when CP popped off, uh I was there first episode. When Christian P popped off, I was there first episode. When somebody canceled, I showed up in a red wig. Keep calling me mad like the internet do, but you know my me, my heart. Pump go. I wish you the best always. I love you fast. You got on here behind Santana. Um, then, um, Javier, we just got off the phone. I'm so confused. Oh, okay. Okay. They didn't go back and forth. And then, and then all that. I, I got something to say. And, and I'm, and I'm going to say something so controversial. The two dark skinned women. I'm going to say something controversial, and I need y'all to send it to these two dark-skinned women. These are two dark-skinned women, ignorant, clashing with each other. They're already in, I got to say this, they're already in the minority, in the minority, in the minority. These two are dark-skinned, okay? Why in the world that they think it is okay for the two dark-skinned women to be beefing with each other. It don't make sense. Let's keep it real coming from a dark-skinned brother. Both of y'all is flopping. JT, you talking all that crap, you flopping. Glorilla took your spot. Young Miami, you another flop. JT, you listening to Nikki. Nikki don't give a damn about you and your edges, the lack of, okay? You won't make it into modeling. So get that out your head. What I got to say to Carisha, stick to podcasting. Music is not your ministry. Stop it unless you got some good ghostwriters. JT, and young Miami, we know y'all playing us. Y'all both decide to beef with each other so we both can go stream them tired, uneducated bars, EBT worth of beats, and the song's going nowhere. While y'all was bickering with each other, I was listening to Doja Cat. And I was getting my life. Now, I don't know if this is a new album or not, but my Spotify said new music. And I was listening to Doja Cat. And somehow, The Scarlet 2, whatever this album is, it was good. The three, the two songs I like, Disrespectful, uh, Acknowledge Me, I was getting my life. These two EBT, the dirty parts of Florida. We don't care nothing about the city girls. Y'all had a little tiny window. JT, you was in jail eating a choke sandwich. Come in crying. Young Miami couldn't hardly talk, couldn't hardly speak. Ignorant country bumpkin defending you. JT was in the bed with Diddy doing freak offs and pink cocoa. According to the lawsuit. JT got in a relationship with Lil Uzi Vert. Let him eat her box. She forgot about being a rapper. She wanted to be a housewife with a home. Now y'all got distracted musically, got replaced musically. Now y'all got to beef with each other. 
None of y'all records number one. It ain't going to go number one like Megan Thee Stallion. Because Megan Thee Stallion went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the former queen of hip-hop, Nicki Minaj. It worked for her, and she had a machine. Last time I checked, the City Girls, y'all label is a sinking ship. Who's on that label? Now, QC, what the name of the label is sinking. Migos, they gone. Rest in peace to the Migo. And they ain't relevant now. Offset, he barely toured in front of 50 people. He's riding the, the coattails of his wife. And she's selling whoop queen whip shots and talking to selling stuff with Pat LaBelle. Quality control, there is no quality. Y'all have, y'all out of control. And this is the part that gets me. Y'all are dark skinned. Y'all have to work twice as hard to get half as your light skinned Doja Cat is getting. Why would y'all sit on Brandy's internet and beef with each other? We don't care nothing about you low quality EBT wearing allegations, freak off Pete. Coco snorting trash has been rappers. We have moved on. We don't care nothing about it. Because JT, your music ain't hidden like Glorilla. Young Miami, you can't say nothing because your man that you say you want roaches to crawl over you because he a billionaire, he's on his way to federal prison. Yo, so-called stepchildren that was eating your box. Well, stepchildren, Diddy, children, stepchildren, oh, they got handcuffs on you. So you shut up until you ready to sit there and cry like a white woman. The Gail King or to the Wiley Show, shut up. Because after we get through talking about this today, we going to move on listening to Doja Cat. Glorilla, Cardi B new album, and we're going to be seeing Nicki Minaj trying to force her husband with the ankle bracelet, S.O., level three, down our throats. We don't care nothing about the city girls. Y'all are flops. We ain't talking about your music. We ain't talking about your bars. We ain't talking about y'all bickering. When well, you say you judging me, you let the internet come and Saucy Santana, shut up. Saucy Santana is no longer relevant. The gay community don't even book him no more. The last time we heard about Saucy Santana, he took the Popeye chicken and left the whole booking. He's on reality TV trying to make it happen. Beefing with his ex-boyfriend. They didn't care nothing about him. He just screwed Saucy Santana to get some publicity. We are kidding about you. It makes my heart ache to see these two chocolate women beefing with each other. They're already at the bottom of the barrel according to the standard of the industry. It ain't too many dark-skinned rap mega stars. To be honest, there is none in the top ten. You're not in the conversation. I get it. Y'all want to distract from them Diddy allegations. You can't. It's in black and white. You know what I mean? Go raise your children. Go out there. Go to them pool gigs. JT, you keep allowing Nicki Minaj to put a battery in your back. And watch how she just sit there and laugh. Nicki Minaj is a master manipulator. You allow her to get in your head, dummy. You ain't no solo act. You're not no Deanna, Diana Ross. You are in the back. You a groupie. You a group. Who got in your head and said you were a solo star? They lied to you. Don't let
let them bark egg you on because they mad at Carisha because her show was better than Nicki Minaj Queen Radio. You let them bark that don't even support you. They make your record go number one. Only time they interested in you, JT, when you being messy. How about they help and sell out your tickets so you can get bigger venues? You let them bars egg you on. They ain't supporting you. Where's the support? Why they ain't begging Nikki for JT to open up 30 minutes at that sold out tour? They said it's sold out. Why JT ain't on there? Why the princess of rap ain't on there? Did she say she was the princess? She the servant of rap. Ain't no princess. She ain't acting like no princess. Get up out of here. Anybody should be the princess right now. Look like it's Glorilla. So, and, 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 this rap stuff is just, I, I, I'm so glad that I'm not a stan. I just talk about this on YouTube. This is not a conversation in my real life. I like great music. I'm not into like the bickering. I just talk about it on YouTube and I'm done with it. This will not be a dis conversation at my dinner table. Okay? Because this is just stupid. Dumb. Two struggling rappers. Now, for historical knowledge, when JT was in prison, Carisha worked with Lil' Kim. Young Miami worked with Lil' Kim. They did a record. She shout out JT. Look him shout out JT. They really show JT love while she was in prison. JT, you have nobody to blame but yourself. It was your criminal behavior that hurt the group. Fit half of the group in prison. Then you got out. It was too late. Because by the time y'all talking about an album, the world was shut down. We weren't worried about no city girl. We weren't worried about act bad. We weren't worried about act up. Baby, we was worried about, it, do, do, do we get got to get it vaxxed up? Do we got to put a mask? We social distance. We weren't worried about turning up and twerking. We was worried about, is we going to make it the next day? But if you didn't go to prison, maybe y'all would have had a better run. Dummy. You criminal. You can't even keep your man in order. Look, easy bird. Then you're going to get up on. This is how stupid you are, JT. I got to say it. You on stage. I don't want to twerk. I'm a classic. You ain't classy. You showing your ass. Talking about you classy. Shut down. If you truly classy, then why are you showing your ass on stage? You might as well shake it and show it. You might as well let the DJ touch it and kiss it and lick it. You're showing your ass. So don't get up on there talking about you classy. That's a damn lie. I'm not going to twerk. I'm a classy lady. What well, you showing your ass? If you're a married woman, about to be a married woman, then act like it. I don't know too many classy women that show their ass in a rinky dink musty club. And they classy. And uh, did she say she was a lady? Oh, child, please. She's she, <laughs> okay. She said she was a lady. <laughs> she wasn't. Ain't no lady on that. You can smell the stench of her cheeks on that stage. Thank you so much for that, Kelly. She ain't no lady. A lady will cover herself. A lady will know how to maneuver in this business. A lady will know how to sell. And she don't fit none of them criteria.
And a lady won't keep a man around her that cheat on her every blue, every day and talk and dog her out to his side chicks. I have to say that. So I'm done talking about Carisha. I'm done talking about Young Miami. Um, I'm Carisha Young Miami is the same thing. I'm done just talking about the city girls. I want to see more for them to focus on music because Doja Cat, she's selling. Streaming, you know. Nikki selling out tours. City girls performing in 50 person clubs. You just show up. You get to get in for $20. You ain't got to go through no security. Just show up. Pay, pay the security guard at the door with dirty fingernails. <sighs> Do you fit the criteria, Miss Wilder? <laughs> I'm a man. I'm an alpha. <laughs> Look at Nate. Now he want to say something. See? <laughs> well, he's allowed to say it. That's my rib. All right. Um, if y'all want to call in to give your thoughts, and uh, if you want to give your thoughts, I love to hear from you all. Um, uh, uh, the number is uh, 972-674, okay? For those that want to call in, 972-674-9462. If you want to give your thoughts about the entire situation, you're more than welcome to. 972-674-9462. If you got something to say, you're more than welcome to say it at this particular time. 972-674-9462. All right. Um, iconic moment uh, for us to be able here. We started on time. We started early. <laughs> we started early. And uh, very iconic. So I personally want to say thank you to the supporters that have came through. I do want to address some comments. I got to address some comments. I got to be messy. So I'm going to address... One particular comment, um, someone said, Wally, why are you posting old videos and blah, 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 blah. And respectfully, I will always post whatever I find that I want to post. Okay? Um, and I have to tell a viewer, I said, BET posts old content reruns all the time. I never seen you get mad at BET. <gasps> BET been around for decades. Wiley been around for 10 years, so I have every right to post anything in my in my archive that I want to post to the audience, and I would do it. Okay? Anybody, any name, any blogger that been on my show, if I want to post them episodes, I can do it. So if you upset about that, go argue with your mama. Or you can call in, but you ain't going to do that because I will drag you. Okay? You ain't ready for this tongue. Actually, you should be. You ain't ready for a tug. You haven't had a good tug in a long time. That's why you're bitter in the Wiley Show chat. Okay, I see your comments. I'm here for it. But I will always play replays. It's my show. Get your own show. Okay? We don't do mass privatization over here. You know what I'm saying? So that's just what we do. All right? I've been doing this for a long time, and we're 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 picking up traction. I did have to block some people. Uh, this these un unnecessary trolling doesn't even make sense. The trolling don't make sense. You're going to be blocked. Uh, I don't play. Uh, talk what I talk about on YouTube. You're trying to go off the cuff and have a moment. You're going to be blocked. If you want to have a moment, call in. That's the greatest moment. <laughs> but uh, I did have to block. I don't play. Like, don't come here and, and, and you just going to be gone. Okay? All right? But if you want to call in, that's your moment. I'm going to give you a time to have your moment. Okay? Then there was one comment. Oh, Nate going to get tired of you. You're saying that Nate is your husband. You're blah, blah, blah. I'm a storyteller. Okay? And if you think I'm married to Nate 702, I'm married. 
You think I'm not married to 702. I'm still married. Okay? If you allow the flame on rolls of the world to put on a wig and they can say they're a woman and you believe that, then I'm married. Okay? Okay. 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 If you believe T.S. Madison is a woman, then I'm married. Did she just say she feel like a woman? I feel like I'm married. Hello? If you don't like my feeling, you support people that be feeling like them. Uh-oh. You just yeah, ain't gonna come down that road. I feel like I'm married. They said, I am tired. You are a liar. Ah. Okay. But no, I just had to personally say that. Now, I will be covering Chasing Dallas tomorrow. But it's not just me reviewing the show. It's a lot of mess um, with um uh -huh. it's a lot of mess. With Reese G, um, some uh, Trace O'Rourke, T. S. Valerian Dallas, it was a big commotion. Um, Markel uh, was dragging Reese G, dissed him. Uh, make sure y'all send this to Reese G for those that follow him. Talking about him bad, and my thing is this, and I will say this because uh, I was talking to Reese G. I said that's what Markel do. He talks a lot of mess about people, and. He's very scary in person. He'll try to change it up because, girl, don't, don't play with me because he tried one time with me. That man tried one time with me, and I told him because uh, I was nominated for an award back, in, I believe, in 2018, 2019, and I went. And me and Reese G bump heads. I said, I'm going to see y'all at that award show, and we're going to have to have a conversation. Reese walked to his seat. Mark killed it. Hey, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You better calm down. You want to keep that same energy? Okay. You see what The Rock did to Cody. Don't play with me. <laughs> I don't play. Um, so I don't I don't play with that. Don't play with me. I don't play these kitty games for free shows. I show up in real life. And he must have saw you got to check. Uh, don't play with me. You, you want to play with me? Okay, let's play. Best believe you're going to lose. Okay? Now, it's not my fault. I understand be nice, Wally. Remember what I told you about Chase Side. I understand, babe. I get it. But I'm a little ignorant. I've said it publicly. Markel, you're messy on the outside. You should have been a cast member because as a producer, you're trash. As a producer, you're boo-boo. The views ain't viewing. The reason why you so jealous of Reese G is because you're not getting the Reese G numbers. Your cast is lazy. Astro, he's homeless. He dressed homeless. He's broke. How you want him to be a rapper he up here screwing Ted Lee ex-boyfriend and got a dollar to save his life. He got a broke story. It's chasing poverty. It ain't chasing his dream. Where's the dream? Where's the, where's the success of the dream? That man is chasing homelessness. And it's sad because you need to bat at, first of all, you need to bathe him, put him on some good clothes, so he can have the illusion of being a, a successful rapper. He's the homeless, the most homeless one looking on the gas. And I blame you as the producer. Producers need to go in their closet, take them to the store, shower them, and put them on a good outfit. So he can look crispy on camera. I mean, look dusty and musty. And I speak to your shame. Then another piece that Reese told me probably privately, I'm gonna echo this. It is a shame that they trash and Ted Lee said the man ain't no realtor. 
Then y'all embarrass him and tell Lee, you stupid. Ain't no way in the world. I'm going to show the world I'm a realtor. I got to say this. And I got a client, Robert. He's going to get us a line. I got a client, Robert. Give me a sec. I, he want to open up a salon. Give me one second. I want to say, hold, hold on one second, Nate. I, I, know, I know you want to say this. You, you, you want to open up a salon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I done told you. Why you never listen? Okay, okay. Well, well, well I got to say this, though. No, wanna, let it wanna, go. You. Wiley. Okay. I'm going to let it go. I'm not. Wiley, I'm not fighting. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, you don't have to let, fight. But I will say let, this. I will say this. Wiley. And I, let it go. Okay. Wiley, we talked about this. Okay. We did talk about it. And I'm I'm going to let Wiley, it go. Wiley, get to another subject now. <laughs> I, 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 I will after this last piece. Wiley. <laughs> That's why I did not. I'm not going to be seen with you okay. no more. Okay, I'm done. But listen, what? Why? How in the world? Let... <laughs> I cannot let it go. My thing is, that I'm not being mean. I'm just being honest. I'm not being mean. Respectfully, I'm an outspoken. Person. Don't respectfully, respectfully, don't say nothing. Okay. Okay. But if you call, don't why say don't you that Tedley is a realtor? To the topics, how in the world the would you tell that Tedley is a realtor? And the Negro didn't even have the keys to the building. <laughs> Ain't no way in the world that I'm allowed somebody to be my realtor and the man ain't got the keys to the building. That's now, I, I, okay, okay, I agree with you on that. that that's what the, I agree. That's what I'm gonna say. That is no, you was gonna say a very. You was gonna go in and I let him. No, that's what yeah. I was gonna say. Okay, okay, I, I said that. You call it that. But if you say you're a realtor, and the piece that we see on the reality show, I, I don't got the keys. You looking in the window. Well, we can go on the weekday. Then why the hell would you take that? That's a part that of is, your brand. That's true. That's dumb. Listen. That's stupid. Listen. That's all you have to say. Why see why you use all those? That's why that you old all man those... dumped you and screwed See, Astro. See, that's the way I'm that's not coming back to Dallas. I'm not going to Dallas with Astro, you. Astro, and that's why you struggling to put on the ladder, and that's why you struggling <laughs> to put that street, that spray on your chin, and that's why the ladder ain't matching up with the 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 the, 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 the color of your chin, and it's all the way effed up. You embarrass yourself. I'm sorry. I got to say it publicly. I got to say it okay. because I couldn't okay, well, be wild. Let me say because it triggered me to see this struggling real estate agent on the street. Well, let me, he's not a real estate agent, he's a leasing agent. He let don't me have say his real estate. Let me say life. publicly. Saying, well, let me say publicly that I'm denouncing my friendship with you what, in you, Dallas. Everywhere else we can be friends. And I'm denouncing because I do not want to be in no Dallas we, drama. We're I told not you. In any Dallas drama because last time I said when we was out, did you see a Ted Lee there? You no. Can, we didn't go to those spaces. I'm so not let's, going let's to those be spaces, clear. The raggedy, rinky dink spaces, you won't catch me in the ghetto. I went okay. to the ghetto well, with my friend to eat sweet Georgia Brown. That's it. I eat the fried chicken in the ghetto. You think I'm gonna be part with them in the ghetto? I stay at home. You don't catch me with them ghetto people with half spray chins, stinky breath, struggling real estate agent, can't keep a man to save their life, and screwing half okay. of the cast. Again, okay, I'm gonna keep okay. it real. If I can't okay. keep it real, there is no Wiley. I'm gonna keep it real, and let's be clear. Well We'll keep it real. He's Are we married? He's Ted Lee. It is we'll keep him it real. Me and him Can you... It is stopping me and him being in my bed and messing up my sheets. Let's keep it all the way Can clear. You... See, these girls, they talk all that mess doing the light, but in the dark, they want to see what I'm working with, and they don't mind me up there set aside them in the dark, messed up my sheets, just like me and Reese G got in here. He told the world. 
I have a right to tell what I got to say. I'm sorry. I'm not going to kiss your butt unless I'm inviting okay. you to my bedroom and we actually do that in, in the bedroom. But when I get on this okay. platform, everybody going to get okay. it. And I wasn't married to Nate then. I was single with me. And, you know. you're, you're not married to me now, but I'm not going to go back down that rabbit hole. No, no, no. We're not going down that hole. But I will say this. Nate, I understand. But this is the thing that I say to you when I do this show. When I talk about these girls, I have to talk about them. But I, okay. I'm okay. I don't congregate with them. For me, I don't have to never go to a gay, gay bar. I actually like hanging out with middle age, ventured, straight people. I don't like, with me, if, if I'm not with you, I would be at a straight club. I don't care nothing about those gays. Because number one, they don't dance. They just want to see who they're going to lick up on, screw in the bathroom. Uh, what, 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 what's the other club that the gays be getting in the bathroom and in the showers and the bathhouses? That's it. They, they don't dance. They, they don't congregate. They swirl around on the pole and screw each other in the parking lot. When I hang with my beautiful straight people they or the lesbian community, they dance. We have a good time. Them gays swirl around in the circle, screwing each other in the parking lot or in the car. That they pay an eight hundred dollar car note for. That's it, and they put on all that spray. That's it. But Nate, I'm sorry, respectfully, I have I had to get my opinion because again, okay. there is no Wally, and I go outside, and if any of them got a problem with the Wally show, you just said you don't go outside. I, I, you I don't do be go in outside. I do go outside. You don't be in a space. I, I That's never why you had a problem with any of these people. But best believe, if we do ever have a problem. Wherever we have a problem with, y'all ain't going to be able to congregate there no more. Because guess what? <laughs> One thing about Wiley, <laughs> I think Nate should know this. The city don't play. There won't be no club. It will be my club. You talking about lawsuits. We, we talking about lawsuits, baby. The, the biggest thing that you can do, that's why JT, not the JT, the rapper, the JT, this uh, he's a bush queen. He was fighting at Marty's. <laughs> I got to share this story. If y'all don't mind, I'm going to be a little messy. You don't know who this person is. Okay, you, well, you be fight, messy on you your own at Marty. I got to go, I oh, gotta go, go ahead, back go to ahead, work. Nate. But I want to share this. I want to share this. He was, he was fighting at Marty's. And so the real owner, he ain't black, he white. The city was told, told him, like, if you keep having these conversations in your club, if the police have to come, we're going to shut you down. So the reason why, and I want Nate to hear this, would Nate know this, the reason why it's not a lot of black gay clubs in Dallas, because y'all effed it up. When you fight, when you mace, the police show up, the city going to shut you down. There is no more club. That's why in Dallas is literally a club desert. There's not too many gay clubs that focus on black gay men. You know why? Because all y'all do is fight. Yeah, you're going to be boo and bickering, but you ain't going to have no more clubs. You barely got Marty's. Okay? So, that's you. And Houston the same way. Houston got all of the clubs now. Well, but if they start bickering and fighting and, and police got to show up, all them clubs will be gone. They're not playing that stuff no more. That's why I am a huge advocate for shutting these criminal, ratchet establishments down. Why in Vegas? That we don't have, and I talked to the people that was in Vegas. They said, Wally, the reason why we don't have a lot of black clubs that you described, because every time we have that, pow, pow, go on, fight and go on, they shut it down. And that's why when you most of these clubs, it's all white targeted clubs because white people don't, be, they're not as violent in the nightlife compared as the black people. Same thing in Chicago. Reason why we don't have a lot of black clubs, we only got one, and that's the Jeffrey Pub. That's a hole in the wall because all the other stuff that targeted towards blacks, they shut it down because of fighting, because of pow pow, because of stupidity. Okay, and I got to be real. I had to drag Chase in Dallas, and I go outside 
when I feel like going outside. And if they want a problem, best believe you want a show, I can guarantee you I'm going to win. I may not win in that instance. I may win. I will win the war. I'm not going to leave you out. I will win the war. And who's going to leave out victorious? Me. Not you. <laughs> I don't play no games, you guys. I I, I had to just say it about Chase the Dallas. And I get what Nate talking I I understand what Nate is talking about. <sighs> but this is the thing, you guys. I'm Wiley. I got to talk about this situation. I'm an entertainer. I got to talk about these people. And this is why I don't go out like that. Because I refuse to be fake just to hang out with these broke people. That be begging me for cat. Can we talk about it? That be in my DM for cash apps and Zales. But yet you on the show. Not getting paid. Ask me for coins. And you think I cannot criticize you? I have every right to criticize. And I will, whether you want me to or not. When you open yourself up on camera and come up on YouTube, you're fair game. And if you can't handle this mouth, stop trying to be a reality star. Go back, work at Walmart. Go back, work at Kroger's. Go say paper or plastic. And that's it. Okay, did you ever give that guy? A, no, I didn't. That, that, but I'm just telling you, these people, and you can't beat these people on the internet showing how fly they are. They be begging. They ain't got a dollar. They ain't got no place. If I really, really want to be messy, it's sad because their priorities mess, is, is messed up. Why are you trying to show that you chasing your dream and you can't even, you, you, you don't even have an apartment? You don't have no shelter. You, you're going house to house because you're so focused. You're, you don't even know how to manage your day-to-day -day operations. You don't even know how to balance a checkbook or bank account. To keep a roof, but you always got all these evictions. So let's go there. And you on camera lying to the world that you're this top rap star? Where? Where are you performing? You in one shelter to another shelter. It's not because, because the inflation things are high. It's because you don't like to pay rent. You can't keep a job because your attitude is thank. You think you the needy links. You think you Porsche. And you a black feminine gay man that don't know how to work in the system to fund your dream. Okay, you think you too big to work at Walmart, honey. You go and suffer and have to live on somebody's couch and get them cakes up to even stay on the couch. And that ain't even working now. <laughs> I mean, I could go there and I could name some names, but I'm not going to name them. Name. Not now. I get it. I get it when Nate was trying to. I get it. I understand. I get it. But he don't know. He... Because he don't see the behind the scenes stuff. He will be shocked. Most of these people you see, they ain't going to say a word. They ain't going to say a word. If they do, <laughs> best believe we're going to put on a show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not that concerned about Dallas. Because I, I, I've had a friend and <sighs> shout out to Jody Monroe. Jody Monroe went out in Dallas. I got to share this. Sit on down. We about to be a little messy. Very attractive. Jody Monroe, J-O-D-Y Monroe. Follow him on Instagram. See if you can find him. He's a chocolate man, got a body and everything. So he sent me, he, it was his birthday. He said, you know, while I'm throwing his birthday thing, I said, okay, cool, go ahead. I'm like, okay. You ain't see me there. He got into it with another gay. They maced him. That wasn't even his birthday celebration. It was weekend before his birthday, the last weekend before his birthday. 
they mace him. They have to go and get all that milk to put all over him. And I'm going to say this to him publicly. When you get into those conversations like that, it's time for you to stop going out. I don't roll like that. That energy, I don't roll with. Because sometimes it be liquor and it be his inner circle of friends. They get that liquor in them. They boost their head up and y'all be bickering. I don't do that. I don't. You don't catch me outside every single weekend. Always in drama. I talk a lot of drama on the show, but outside, you got, I don't talk all that drama outside. That's dumb. That's stupid. Get in, ba-da-da, have a good time, and I'm gone. You got to sense energy. I don't go to every club. Marty's, don't go there. Because by the time they start partying, it's in the wee hours of the night. Baby, if you couldn't get a party cranking at 10 o'clock, 10 to 10 30, 11, 11 30, and it was me going to your establishment, I ain't going to be having to wait until 2 30 in the morning for it to get cracked. That ain't me. Baby, I'm 30 something years old. Baby, that party better warm up when I get there at 10 30. Be there for a good hour, hour or two, and I'm going home. You ain't going to catch me at no 1.32 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. I will never forget it. Shout out to your boy, Noonan. I love your boy, Noonan. There's another gay person y'all probably don't know. But he said, yeah, Wally, I go to ghetto clubs. I really want to see him. Very attractive. He said, well, I'm at Marty's. Well, I'm at Suella's. I'm not going back to Marty's. It's, y'all don't do nothing there. And then the DJ, DJ Rule Boy, who was in my home, uh, he said, oh, yeah, the party get crumped about 1.32. I said, I ain't said that. So I told, I told Theo's sister, I said, hey, well, let's go somewhere else. I'm not about to sit in no empty room and see three bush queens twirl around on the pole. If I want to see that, I could just be on Jack and get three people to twirl around on the pole and we can get it in and go to bed. And I can eat that dry chicken. Take me to the club where it can be lit. So it took me as well as, and it was more lit. So that's me. Okay? Have a good time. That's me. I don't go too much like house parties. I've done that. I have, I'm house partied out. I did that in my 20s. And we went to ghetto in Inglewood on 63rd on buses and trains. I did that. You ain't gonna catch me down no house party. <laughs> Unless it's a Diddy party. <laughs> okay, but now you ain't gonna catch me in no house party. I won't be there unless it depends on the vibe. But if it's in the hood, no. If it's lit, then maybe. I'm very picky on where I go. I I've always been that type as, as I get up in age. But I got to talk about these girls. I got to. They respect me because I do it. I'm real. See, the problem in the gay community, and Jason shared in this interview, and I don't want to get into details with his interview, what he shared, but y'all are so quick with just being fake. That's not me. I cannot be fake. I'm sorry. I can't bite my tongue. If you want me to review stuff, I'm Wiley. I cannot turn that off when this camera. Now, when the camera off, I know how to be strategic and work and talk. If you ever, many of you all that was a win the icon of New York and many of y'all, when I went to Atlanta, I don't know if Nate what, listened to that broadcast. I was in Atlanta. All of these people I have dragged in the room. Every one of them that I met. They said, oh, Wally, you know how to maneuver and talk. This is what you do with gays that you didn't drag. Oh, what's up, Brandon Carson? I love you. Oh, my gosh. When you did about him, let's get some drinks. Let's get a couple of shots. You do that, they going to forget about what you said on YouTube. Because I know how to stroke your ego. Oh, yes, Brandon Carson. On episode three, you said that. That was my favorite part. 
Because you don't get that every day when people are really a fan. And we'll buy you a drink. And we'll talk and dance. You don't see me coming in the club, because this will be dumb and stupid. You raggedy B. That ain't me, because the cameras ain't on. If it was a reality show, it'd be different. But I would know how to be strategic. Go to the Chinese restaurant, eat Chinese food with these superstars in my eye, you know, in, in Atlanta. And we had a beautiful time. And I was with some very controversial bloggers. I'm controversial, but it is what it is, baby. I went there, had some connections with them. We got into some things. And it was beautiful. Beautiful. So these girls, they be talking about all that Rue Ride and all that. Most of it's cap. Cap. They ever try to put hands on me, go right ahead. You really think Riley would do anything for a click of the view? You ain't seen that side of Riley. Oh, baby, that's going to be a story time. I'm going to finish that story. <laughs> you ain't going to want that. Because you're going to give Wiley what he's feeling for. Publicity. Just like when uh, when my favorite celebrity, Armand Wiggins, in my clothes, when he got ran up on by a stalker. He got ran up on and the boyfriend protecting him. Boom. One of Armand, my favorite, used to be favorite celebrity, he a pop took a picture. That was stupid. Me personally, if you ever do that, it's that ain't no picture time. I will say that. That ain't no picture time. I don't you ever think that I'm endorsing that stupidity, that stupidness, dummy. Ain't no way in the world. You run up on me. You think I'm going to take a picture introduce to my audience? <laughs> I'm going to take <laughs> some all right. But it won't be no picture. It's going to be a standard like, ill, Yuck. That's weird. That's stupid. And he did that at the right place at a Zeus Network event. <laughs> Try that somewhere else. Y'all let that internet boost your ego up. Many people let the internet boost them up. And it disrupted their whole life. I really want to see that reality. Me too. Why well, be in Vegas April 26th or the 28th? And I get it. This is why Wiley keeps to myself. Because everybody cannot handle Wiley's energy. When I come on camera. I've been doing this for a long time. And I love what I do because I entertain so many people. And the world love what I do because they watch it. But I don't care nothing about your feelings when you're producing doo-doo in my face. And I get it. Thank you for Nate. Because Nate keep me calm. <laughs> I got to keep it real. I get it. Because Nate want to hang out with them. He, 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 he can have a good time hanging out with them. The same thing with um when a blogger came out and hung out with them. He want to invite me. I refuse. I want to hang with these people. They were just in my bed. No. Hang out with them for what? Be phony. They're going to say something smart and I'm going to have to embarrass them in front of their friends. Okay? I know how you moan. I know how you jerk. I know your favorite sweet spot. So don't try to act fancy in front of your little friends. I will embarrass you. So this blogger came I want to meet you, Wiley. His moderator on the phone. You didn't see me go meet. Because I knew he was a flip-flopper. 
he came here, his moderator calling me. Yeah, we, we want to meet you. Hey, Wiley, I'm here with the chase. And I don't care. They ain't nothing special. Hit me up when you sitting with Beyonce and them. You won't see me there. You snagger tooth demon. No, I ain't going. And no, we ain't taking a picture. You a flip flopper. Nope, you won't see me. And I didn't go. I stayed at home. I ain't stunned you or your moderator. That cafeteria dirty feet wearing heifer. Anyway, uh, <laughs> little black boy, you're beautiful. Little black girl, you are enough. When times get hard, always remember to put God first. Okay? Always remember to put God first. And that same blogger called me on Instagram and wants to be messy and said somebody's name and I dragged them for filth. Oh, you can't say that. Don't call me being messy. And they ain't had that friendship with that blogger since. I destroyed that entire Relationship they thought they was going to have. You was trying to be messy. You queen. And that person called and said, why would you allow Wiley to say this about me? Why did you call? See, he, oh, I tried to defend you. No, 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 no. You didn't have to. You would be messy. And I destroyed that entire relationship. Yeah, put me on the phone and try to record me. I'm going to say this publicly. I'm going to be real ignorant. That's why they ain't on Fox Soul today. They were jealous of the person that is on Fox Soul. <laughs> okay, y'all. Um, wow, this has been a good, 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 good show. I will be in Houston. Um, coming up, I will be in Houston. I'm going to go to Houston Pride. Um, going to be with my beautiful white gays, um, the Latino, um, the white Latino gays. Um. I will be going to Atlanta. Um, you will be seeing me in Atlanta, of course, Vegas, um, Kentucky. Um, I think I got, I'm going to add Kentucky to the docket. Uh, Virginia, I'm going to add Virginia to the docket to be around my beautiful straight community. I love straight people. Straight people are the best. They're straight. Um, going back to Chicago, I love Chicago. I love 63rd. Old Block, love Old Block. It's the best. I might go there and do a fashion show. I may go bro. I may go jog in old block Paul. Get the security guards on deck. Love old block. New York definitely got to see the icon. Where is the icon? I think he's busy. Where's the voice of New York? I think she's probably busy too. Maybe she's in college. Where's the Wendy Williams calling? Maybe she's drinking a masecto. Where's the uh the barb caller that called in? I don't know. But I'm here. Shout out to my supporters, uh, members only. We will be doing this week. Um pro uh, Saturday, because um pretty is not available on Sunday. So he's one of the dedicated members. And so I try to make sure I think Saturday is like a good day to do it uh uh for our members only. Uh, uh we're gonna do it on Zoom. Um, and I'm going to see Nate and they're going to be talking about it. He, he, he go reel me on the phone cause he, he want me to meet the people from chasing Dallas and I, we will meet him. Mm -hmm. And I got I'm going to bring some, bring my crew with me, <laughs> bring my little crew with me. Um, we will definitely meet him. Okay. Uh, I think Nate is intrigued by me. Um, he will get to know who I am. Um, he know I'm sweet. Um, this online persona is not the same persona that we got in, in, in the thing. Okay. Okay. Because my energy is totally different in person. Nate knows this. 
and he want to be friends and he he want to hang out with those people. He he gonna see how fake, how broke, how heartbroken he gonna leave with the, those people. I'm gonna I'm gonna him to see it for himself. Come, I better stick with the lesbian community. Stick with fish. I'm not no sticky, sticky fish. <laughs> Anyway, uh, both of them need to stand down. Translate. Yes, I agree. Oh, you, you listened to the previous thing. Uh, uh, wow, I was not planning on coming on the show today. I blame um, Nate for getting me turned up like this. I really blame that man for getting me turned up because Nate did this. Nate had to go, go, don't say that, Wally. You know I'm going to say it. I got to say, I wouldn't be me if I didn't say it. <laughs> don't worry. Them girls make their attention span so short, they don't be going to no club. Baby, they, he going to understand they be on Jack. And see, Nate was in the shower when I was on Jack with one of the cast members. See, I'm about to be messy. Um, I don't want to be messy. I don't want to be messy. But you, you're making me messy. See, Nate making me a little mess. I'm about to drop some tea, but I'm going to mind my business because if I drop the tea, then Nate going to be mad at me again. So he going to disassociate from Wiley. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. My rib is his rib. So we are already glued together. Okay? He can go hang out with them. I'm going to be hanging out with the billionaires. Okay? Hang about them queens if you want to. Because I ain't stunning none of them. I don't even going to talk about them at night when I want to go on Jack and entertain myself. But I love Nate because Nate keep it real. He's a sweet, intelligent guy. Not the best guy to pick out for fast food. I mean, for soul food. But that sweet Georgia Brown was terrible. And I know I'm getting dragged for Phil talking about sweet Georgia Brown. But that was disgusting. It, it made my stomach hurt. It really did. Let's it really did. It made my t stomach hurt. <laughs> no, it didn't. I'm just being messy. I miss this happen everywhere. Well, you lost so much weight when you had your other lottery play. That's when I noticed the difference. Most of most of you look great. Thank you. And y'all know I love me some Nate. But I, I just want Nate to understand, like, I don't, and I'm saying this respectfully. If I had a choice who I like to be lit with, it's the straight community. Like, we went to Heroes Lounge, and I went there a couple of times. I'm lit with the Jamaicans, the African clubs. I rarely go to a gay club unless, like, Nate is there. Like, I go there. But when they're not there, I go to bars, straight stuff. Because it's not always straight because it's gay. It's straight gay people there, if that makes sense. I like that energy. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's just my humble opinion. What is I'm doing here? Okay. Okay. I'm a go to hero uh heroes. Lounge. Yeah, it was lit. 
Cause like they warm up towards like middle of the night, and if you could sit down, I like the middle age crowd, like forty and up, because they got have seat there. You know, our bone. I love that. Cause when I went to Suellas, I was so glad that when Nate was done off the dance floor, we both were done. Cause I sat there, I was able to oil my leg up <laughs> and get some sleep. Little black boy, you're beautiful. Little black girl, you are enough. When times get hard, always remember to put God first. I'll talk to y'all later. Now, we'll be back tomorrow. And don't forget, our schedule is going to change because we're going to be free during the day from Monday through Friday. We're going to be entertaining y'all. We're going to be talking about Chase Dallas tomorrow. Now, Chase and Dallas, get ready. Get your boxing gloves ready, baby. Because you want to rumble with the behind. Because we got a lot of things that we're going to get into tomorrow. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Peace.